humans, I'm Mr. King. Chapter Electrolysis. So first, what is the definition of electrolysis? It means the breaking of ionic compound using electricity. And these two other keywords. Next, electrolyte. It is ionic compound that can conduct electricity in molten or aqueous state by free moving ions. Right, so first, electrolyte. There are two types of electrolyte, molten and aqueous. Okay, molten means there is no water molecule in it. Aqueous contains H2O. Since there is H2O, there are always hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions. Electrodes, there are two types of electrodes as well. Inner electrodes and active. Inner means unreactive. Okay, examples of inner electrodes are carbon, graphite, and platinum. You have to remember these three. Active means reactive, and all active electrodes they are metals electrode. Okay, so this is how electrolysis looks like. See, there is battery. So the longer side is the positive terminal, and the shorter side is the negative terminal. Electrode that is connected to the positive terminal, it is positive in charge. Yeah, and the one that is connected to the negative terminal, it is negative in charge. Alright, remember, electrode that is positive in charge it is called anode, cathode, negative electrodes. Yeah, so remember, you see both the electrodes that immerse in the electrolyte and different charge that attract each other. Therefore, anode will always attract negative ions, cathode attract positive ions. And negative ions it is called anions. Cations it is positive ions. Alright, so how do you remember this? Yeah, chemistry hack. You see, cat ions. There is word cat, C A T cat. Cat it is also called pussy cat. Therefore, positive positive cat ion, positive positive. See, isn't it very easy to remember? Alright, one more thing. Direction of electron flow. Remember, it is always from anode to cathode. Super easy. Okay, next. Okay, reactivity series. So in order to master electrolysis first, you have to master reactivity series with a half equation. Right, see, there are reactivity series for both positive and negative ions, as stated here. Okay, remember, as it goes up the series, okay, it gets more reactive. For positive reactivity series, okay, remember, those that are located from L luminous and onwards, they can only get discharged in molten state. Whereas for negative ions, okay, fluoride, sulfate, and nitrate, okay, they have no reaction. Yeah, so they do not get discharged during electrolysis. Yeah, whereas for halide ions, like chloride, bromide, iodide, they can only get discharged in concentrated electrolyte. Right, so in terms of half equation, remember, positive ions will always gain electrons, negative ions lose electrons. Now, like example is in K positive, it gains one electron to form potassium atom. Okay? And A plus gains one electron to form NA. Calcium 2 plus it gains two electrons. Okay, remember, the numbers of electrons it gains okay, is actually to balance out the charge. Yeah, example given here, you need to know how to write the half equation. Yeah, for negative ions, see example, Cl negative. It loses electrons to form chlorine gas, Cl2. Okay, you have to make sure that the equation is balanced. Yeah, see, this is the half equation for hydroxide ions. Okay, you need to know how to write it. Okay, so basically, this is how to write the half equation. And yeah, remember, you need to know how to write the half equation. Okay, next, first one, electrolysis of molten electrolyte. So this is the experimental setup for molten electrolyte. See, they are heat at the bottom. Yeah, and electrode it is carbon. So example here, you see molten lead to bromide. In electrolysis, the first thing to do it is always to identify the ions present in the electrolyte. See, in this case, molten lead to bromide. Molten means there is no H2O. So it contains only lead to ions Pb2 plus and bromide ions Br negative. Okay, remember, anode will always attract negative ions. Cathode attract positive. Therefore, bromide ion goes to anode. Lead to ions goes to cathode, followed by the half equation given here. Yeah, super easy. So next, you see. Why heat is needed? Yeah, remember, heat it is needed to melt the electrolyte. That's why it is in molten state. Okay, next. 
aqueous solution. Okay, there are two types of aqueous solution, diluted solution and concentrated solution. Okay, followed by the experimental setup. Okay, let's start with dilute solution first. You see example given here, inner electrodes and aqueous sodium chloride. So first, what are the ions present in the electrolyte? Sodium ions, chloride ions. Since it is aqueous, it contains also hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions. So which ions will get discharged at anode and cathode? Okay, remember, always compare the position in reactivity series and pick the one that is lower in position. For example, anode, so which one get discharged? Hydroxide is lower, therefore, OH negative got discharged at anode. Okay, then sodium and hydrogen, okay, hydrogen is lower, therefore hydrogen is selected to be discharged, followed by the half equation. Okay, and then in terms of observation, you see anode, oxygen gas is produced, therefore colorless gas bubbles form. Cathode, hydrogen gas, colorless gas bubbles form. Okay, next, concentrated electrolytes. See example here, concentrated sodium chloride. So what are the ions present in it? Sodium ions, chloride ions, hydrogen ions, and hydroxide ions. Okay, remember, if it is in concentrated electrolyte, halide ions will always get discharged. So in this case, chloride ions will get discharged. Yeah, and sodium can only get discharged in molten state. Therefore, hydrogen ions is selected to be discharged, followed by the half equation given here. And you see, anode chlorine gas is produced. Okay, observation, yellow gas is formed. Cathode hydrogen gas, therefore colorless gas bubbles form. Very easy, isn't it? Sub sub soy la. Okay, next. Active electrodes. Remember, okay, all active electrodes, they are metal. Like example, copper is used here. Alright, okay, one more thing. For active electrodes, the electrolyte used, it must contain the metal ions of the metal electrodes. In this case, copper electrode is used, therefore it must be copper solution for example copper 2 nitrate solution all right remember active electrode means it is reactive which means the electrode itself it will react since it is copper electrodes therefore copper undergoes reaction in this electrolysis for active electrodes always start with the half equation at cathode remember okay, cathode will always attract positive ions therefore cathode attract copper 2 ions and to form copper solid. Whereas for the half equation and not, it is the reverse version of the half equation of cathode. So start from the back, Cu becomes Cu2 plus an electron. That's it. Alright, in terms of observation, anode always get thinner, cathode always get thicker. So why C and anode? Copper solid dissolve okay, to form copper 2 ions, whereas a cathode, copper 2 ions against electrons to form solid. Alright, next, popular questions. So you see, what happens to the concentration of the metal ions in the solution? Or what happens to the color intensity of the solution? The answer for both these questions it is always the same. Remain the same. Okay, or no changes. Why? Because the rate of formation is the same as the rate of removals of the metal ions. Very easy. Okay, next one. Application of electrolysis. There are three. First one, extractions of aluminium. So in this case, the electrolyte used is always molten aluminium oxide, Al2O3, so-called bauxite. And bauxite it is added with a chemical called cryolite. And the purpose of adding in cryolite it is to lower the melting points of bauxite and to increase the conductivity. It is always this two. Remember. Then followed by the half equation. You see, this is molten aluminum oxide. Therefore, it contains only aluminum ions and oxide ions. Anode attract negative ions, oxide ions. Cathode attract positive ions, aluminum ions. Okay, then follow by the half equation. Alright, okay, always make sure that your equation is balanced. And okay, next, popular questions. Why the carbon anode needs to be replaced periodically? Okay, why only anode? You see, look at anode. What is the product of anode? See, oxygen is formed. Therefore, oxygen reacts with the carbon anode to form carbon dioxide. Alright, next, electroplating. So this is the setup for electroplating. Alright, first, what are the purpose of electroplating? 
It is to prevent corrosion and to improve appearance. So in electroplating, anode it is always metal. Cathode it is always objects to be electroplated. For example, anode silver, cathode key. And therefore the electrolyte, okay, it must contain the metal ions of the metal. For example, silver. Therefore it must be silver solution. So in this case, the concept is the same as the concept for active electrodes. Always start with the half equation at cathode first. Silver ions get discharged at cathode. Reverse it, it becomes the half equation at anode. That's it. This is how it works. See, at anode, silver dissolves to form silver ions. At cathode, it attracts silver ions to form silver solid. So this is how silver solid are formed on the surface of the key. Okay, next, purification of metal. Remember, anode it is always in pure metal and cathode it is always pure metal. For example, in this case, anode in pure copper, cathode pure copper. Therefore, solution it must be copper solution. Alright, same thing, okay? Same concept of active electrodes. Cathode always attract positive ions, so copper 2 ions get discharged at cathode. Reverse A becomes the half equation, eh? and now you see, anode Copper dissolve to form copper two ions, and the copper two ions they are attracted to cathode to form copper. Okay, so this is how the metals is purified. Right. Okay. Last one, simple cell. Okay, simple cell it is also called battery. See, in this setup, there's no battery. Okay, and it is replaced by voltmeter. Okay, it is to check the current flow. So how simple cells works? Okay, both the electrodes okay, they are made of different metals. Okay, of different reactivity. Okay, see in this case, zinc and copper. Okay, then followed by electrolyte. So in simple cell, the voltage produced, okay, it has something to do with the distance between both the metals in reactivity series. Okay, remember, okay, the greater the distance between both the metals in reactivity series, the greater the voltage produced. Okay, then how to identify which one is anode and which one is cathode? Okay, remember the one that is more reactive, it is always the anode. Therefore, in this case, zinc is more reactive than copper. Therefore, zinc is anode and copper is cathode. And zinc loses electron. And therefore, the direction of electron flow it is always from anode to cathode. In terms of half equation, you see, at anode, zinc loses electrons to form zinc ions. Whereas, the half equation at cathode is like normal electrolysis. Okay, so you see, sulfuric acid is the electrolyte. So, ions present are hydrogen ions, sulfate ions, hydrogen and hydroxide. So, which one get discharged? Okay, it's like normal electrolysis. Therefore, hydrogen ions will get discharged at cathode to form hydrogen gas. That's it. Isn't it easy? It's not that hard. You see, chemistry is actually quite easy. Alright, thanks. Remember to like the video and subscribe to the channel. See you again. Bye.